cable yarding. It's fast, efficient, and dangerous. Every year, workers face serious and potentially fatal injuries while cable yarding if they are struck by moving logs, cables, debris, and equipment. Safe cable yarding is about getting in the clear and staying there. It's about effectively managing the risks. Cable yarding has a lot of challenges, and one of the big challenges is the dynamic, changing nature of the work. When we look at the hillsides, we're dealing with very difficult terrain. We're dealing with lots of obstacles. We know that risk is always going to be there. The job is to manage it effectively. We do our best to mitigate, and that can be through tailgate meeting, talking with the yarding engineer, and then developing a plan to keep our people safe from the risk of that hazard. The first step in any safe cable yarding operation is planning. Good planning involves, you know, walking the boundaries, understanding what hazards are there, so when you laying out your operation, you can do everything you can to mitigate those hazards. When we talk about hazards, when we talk about risk, it's thinking about the things that potentially could go wrong. If an upset condition occurs, what's the worst thing that could happen? So we want to think about how we can control things. Is there a way that I can eliminate the risk? And if not, then what are the other steps I have to do to mitigate it, to bring it down so there's a minimal potential for anyone to be hurt? To reduce the danger for workers, follow a plan that includes continuously identifying the hazards, assessing the risks, and adapting to changing conditions. This will go a long way in reducing the danger for workers at cable yarding operations. A correct cable yarding setup is important to its safe operation. When the rigging crew arrives on site, all trees should be cut off clean at the stump. The timber should be felled to accommodate safe yarding, preferably with the butt of the tree positioned towards the placement of the road line. Yarding corridors must be wide enough to facilitate the safe yarding of felled timber. At the landing, there must be enough room for the workers and loaders to work safely. The ideal scenario is to really know what equipment you're gonna have on that location. And then based upon the equipment and the capacities, what is then the layout that you're able to orchestrate for that machine? You wanna match your plan to the machine as much as possible. The yarding machine must be placed so that it will not be struck by logs or other debris pulled in with a turn. It must be secured with guy lines attached to anchors. The running line must be rigged in a straight line from top to bottom at an angle and not directly below or above the yarder. If a tree, stump, or piece of mobile equipment is being used as the backspar, there is a 1.5 tree length no work area around it, which cannot be entered when the rigging is under load. A well-planned and executed setup is vital to establishing a safe and efficient cable yarding operation. A dangerous tree can be any tree, live or dead, that is hazardous to workers. Before yarding begins, all dangerous trees must be marked and, if safe to do so, removed. If dangerous trees are left standing, they must also have a 1.5 tree length no work zone around them. Danger trees in yarding operations can pose significant risk if they're not properly assessed or if they're not removed when they're supposed to be removed. If they haven't done anything, this is a time to basically have a, you know, a timeout. Let's have a, a discussion about the danger trees because you don't want to be in a situation where you're spotting or you're hooking up your chokers or doing something where you're not watching the timber line around you and a tree comes down. So ask those questions. Make sure that they're doing what they need to do to protect you when you're working in those areas. The environment can play a role in that. You may have a situation where you don't have danger trees at the time of planning and you may have wind events or weather events that create danger trees. So it requires that ongoing assessment. A retention area is a retained cluster of trees that are preserved during harvest to maintain structural diversity within the cut block. 
Retention areas must also be clearly marked and protected. If unassessed dangerous trees are left along the boundary of the retention patch, there must be a 1.5 tree length no work zone around them. You also need to be thinking about the planning of this. How do we set up properly so that we're not doing things that negatively impact that tree and the yarding operation and put us at risk because of that? The most important thing in safe cable yarding is being in the clear. This means being a safe distance away from anything that can move and strike you. This could be a tree, a stump, a boulder, a cable, or a piece of mobile equipment. In the clear basically means if anything bad happens, it's not gonna impact you. Like you're in a safe spot. And in the clear, it's everybody. It's the logging truck driver, it's the chaser, it's the bucker, it's everybody that there's a potential to be exposed to that hazard and the associated risk. Every situation is different and the workplace is always changing. As a general rule, you should always be at least 1.5 tree lengths away from any moving logs. We really say that being in the clear is a dynamic risk assessment. What you started out doing may have been quite effective, but as you move up the slope and the, and the steepness of the grade increases, there might be different types of terrain there, things like rocks, loose stumps. All of a sudden, being two tree lengths becomes three. It might become four, based on the nature of what you're encountering. The challenge may be, too, is fatigue on your workers. The further they have to walk back and forth for spotting, for hooking chokers, the tireder they get. And towards the end of the day, the tendency is to want to move you know, less distance, not more distance, when they may need to be moving more. You need to be that defined safe distance where the activity that you're doing on the slope is not gonna negatively impact the workers. One of the key elements of risk too is what we call the potential for chain reactions, which might be pulling a log out of a hillside of timber that has been fell and bucked and all of a sudden a rock or a stump or a tree that was way up the slope starts to come down and run away because of what you did down below. And the next thing, you've got material coming right at you that you weren't expecting. Being in the clear is the most important thing anyone on a grapple yarding crew needs to be mindful of. It's what's gonna keep you alive and safe, bottom line. You should never be yarding directly above or below the yarder. You always want to yard at an angle to the side of the yarder. This is called the yarding angle or offset. If you're yarding straight down on yourself, if something does kick loose or the log that you're yarding breaks, you want to make sure that the angle is sufficient that it'll slide off the side and take the path of gravity and not come right down on top of the yarding operator or associated crew. So you want an offset angle, seven to nine degrees. And over the years where we have seen that offset distances aren't set up properly, you can have all of a sudden a big log coming right down straight at the machine at significant force and speed. It also is a benefit when you're uphill yarding so that you're not basically bringing your crew right below the machine. And if something runs away as it gets near the landing, it's not running right back down on them. It has an offset distance as well. It's a critical part of safe yarding is to be able to have that. Deflection is the amount of height or lift between the ground and the elevated cable system. Adequate deflection and clearance allow for the butts of the logs to be lifted clear of the ground as they are yarded. The more deflection, the safer the operation. Without proper deflection, it's really hard to control the risks. The whole yarding system is under stress. Your anchor system's under stress. Your guy line systems are under stress. Your lines are under stress. Your product is at jeopardy in terms of breaking logs in half. A yarding operation without good deflection is a yarding operation at risk. 
The less deflection you have, typically the harder the work is. The harder you have to work, the further you need to walk out to get clear. So fatigue, when you're fatigued, you make poor decisions. If we have deflection, life is good. Ask any cable yarder, operator, crew member, how important is deflection? It's everything. It's everything. Guidelines must be used to secure the yarding machine, and often the back spar as well. All guidelines must be attached to anchors. The strain on these guidelines and anchors is enormous, so they must be checked for stability after the initial pull, before each shift, and when there's any change in conditions. Anchors are critical in yarding. They ensure the stability of what you're doing. They take a lot of force, take a lot of load, a lot of strain on them. They need to be checked a minimum of daily. And you go up, you walk around the anchors, you make sure that everything is stable, and then you basically want to watch it under load. Putting it under load, you get a chance to see if things have started to lift. And we call it breathing. Is it starting to lift because of the impact of yarding on it? If so, you need to do something to change that. You need to reset your anchors, maybe add additional tie backs or tail holds to make sure that it stays stable. Because the last thing you want to have happen is you're under load and you're pulling a big turn in and your anchors let go. And all of a sudden, all that gear, that equipment is coming down the hillside or coming up the hillside in an uncontrolled manner. And if any workers are anywhere near that, very significant risk of injury to them. Landings are areas where logs are landed by the yarder. They are also where logs are sorted and prepared for transport by the loader. For cable yarding, landings must be built large enough to land the average size log in a turn, as well as to allow for a safe work environment. Is it big enough? That's a key thing. What size of wood are we gonna be landing? We wanna make sure that we can land at least three quarter of the length of the logs to basically ensure that when we drop the wood onto the landing, it's stable, it's not gonna slide off because gravity wants to pull it back down a hill. The most common mistakes with landings is they don't exist. And the other part is where they do exist is putting them in a location where you can maintain offset, where you can maintain good yarding angles, have enough room if you're running multiple phases for everybody and everyone has enough room to be safe. So it begins with planning. What size of timber am I gonna bring in? What size of equipment am I gonna bring in? And how many pieces of equipment am I going to have in that location? And do I have adequate spacing to be in essence efficient, but also to be safe? Some cable yarding operations utilize a chaser at the landing. A chaser is the member of the logging crew who unhooks the cables or chokers from the logs at the landing. The chaser must always have a designated safe position at the landing. This is a place where they are free from the hazards of the yarder and all other equipment. Chasers must never leave their designated safe position until the load is completely settled. Loaders, processors, logging trucks, and other mobile equipment are a constant hazard at the landing. These mobile equipment operators must not enter the landing area while the chaser is present, unless they are requested to do so by the chaser. A hook tender is the working supervisor for the yarding crew, who oversees hooking the logs and planning and setup for the yarding roads. The job of a hook tender is one of the most dangerous on the crew because they are out in the cut working around felt timber. The workers doing that work are at significant risk of being hit by the line, but they're more often at risk of being struck by materials that are dislodged in that process. So other logs, debris that could come down and they're basically standing in what we call the bite. Good there, line in. You have to have really solid communication in terms of voice control or voice commands or any type of signaling. A spotter is the member of a grapple yarding crew who directs the yarder operator to position 
or site the gravel onto each log. The spotter ends up being the person who's in essence out on the hillside. They're trying to give direction and information and commands to the yarding operator to where they're gonna drop their grapple. And they sometimes like to get too close. And that's the challenge is you wanna be able to see what you're you know, needing to see, but don't compromise yourself. Don't get too close. Overall, spotters can control the risk by ensuring they use good voice commands or, or signaling and ensuring that they are in the clear before they go ahead on the turn. Good communication between the workers in the block and the yarder operator is key to a safe cable yarding operation. Hook tenders and spotters must always communicate their intentions and position to the machine operator since they are often out of sight. They must not signal to yard the load until they are in a safe position facing the turn. And they must be trained in voice command signals. Forestry operations are complex and dynamic workplaces. Many forestry phases often work simultaneously and in close proximity. When done well, this is known as phase integration. When done poorly, phase integration becomes phase congestion. The conflicting demands of the different phases have negative impacts on each other and on safety of the site. There's pressure to get the wood to market. We have the falling, the yarding, and then we have the loading and transportation of the logs. And those can be brought together in quite close proximity. The closer they are, the more risk is posed to everybody in that situation, and especially to you when you're out on the rigging. The planning from the highest level created this upset condition of phase congestion, and now everybody is working, but they're not working effectively, and we're creating unnecessary risk because of poor planning. Phase congestion needs to be managed in a manner where there's adequate time and distance between the different types of operations so that there isn't those risks. You really want to look at phase congestion as being the hazard. When we, when we see operations that are congested, especially with the dynamics of cable yarding, that it's integrated in a way that the hazards don't overlap. If you see things that you're concerned about, say something. This is the time to speak up. Make sure that you're not going to be put at risk because of the work that is being done by another crew in close proximity to where you guys are on the rigging. Written safe work procedures are essential for all cable yarding operations. We talk a lot about safe work procedures in forestry. The challenge we run into at times is human nature, you know. And human nature, we want to maybe do things in a, what we may see as an efficient or a more efficient manner. And we may be willing at times to compromise our safety by not following the safe work procedures. Every safe work procedure, just like every regulation, there's a reason they're there. And, and often it's because someone's been hurt or worse killed as a result of not following these safe work procedures. Written safe work procedures should be developed in conjunction with the employer, equipment manufacturers, supervisors, and workers. And as conditions change and evolve, the safe work procedures should be reviewed and updated as needed. The best safe work procedures as well are those that have interaction from the workers. You need to incorporate that knowledge and that background into your safe work procedures. You also get better buy-in if they are part of the process and understand you know, the reason for the safe work procedures. Because the biggest thing at the end of that, they understand the why and why it's important. Supervisors at cable yarding operations are responsible for coordinating workers and equipment and creating and maintaining the safety culture at the job site. Supervisors are critical. They're tasked with ensuring the health and safety of their crew. 
These are the people who need to have the skills, the training, you know, the investment of time to support them in their role. So they need to be able to talk to their crew. They need to be able to communicate with them in an effective manner. They need to be able to let them know what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be doing it and how you're going to be doing it in a safe manner. And they need to be part of that process of soliciting the feedback. Clear, open and regular communication between all members of the cable yarding crew is essential for safe operations. This communication may include written safe work procedures, daily tailgate meetings, proper radio commands and etiquette, and a general culture of open and supportive dialogue between all members of the crew. A properly run tailgate meeting gives that opportunity for workers to talk to you know, management or supervisors what they're experiencing and working together to ensure that what is the best way to manage that risk and coming to a consensus and mitigating that risk. As workers, your input is important. You may have noticed changes, things that were of concern, and if you feel that there's significant risk to you and to your colleagues, you need to, in essence, put your hand up and say, hey, this isn't working. We need to do something differently. What are the things that are gonna potentially hurt us today that we're doing, and how can we do it better? Because it's so dynamic, and because it can change, Supervision has to be in place and it has to be ongoing. Supervisors need to have the experience so they can be able to identify what's under stress, what's under load, what may create an upset condition to get ahead of that and mitigate before it happens. If you want your health and safety program to fail, fail to invest in your supervisors. These are your critical people. As cable yarding continues to be a common method of moving timber off the hill, it's vital that workers know when they are in the clear and when they're not. Cable yarding in British Columbia can be extremely hazardous, but we can do it safely. Overall, it's just an awareness. I want to get the message out that we still need to plan appropriately. We need to conduct operations safely and we need to stay in the clear. The message for cable yarding still is make sure that you and your crew understand the hazards and the risks that are being presented and you have a plan. My challenge to the industry is to think to the future. What can we do to reduce the risk of people being struck by? What can we develop what can we implement that will make it safer? The challenge is to keep innovating and keep thinking to the future about how we can collectively reduce that risk. Let's do what we can do to make a difference.